Hey everybody, welcome back. Thanks for checking out another one of my videos. Uh, in this video, we're gonna go ahead and look at not a whole view of system D. We're not gonna get into the details and uh, kind of the, the process of setting it up and configuring it and, and going into it in, in depth. Uh, but I thought it would be a, a good sort of opportunity to uh, kind of show you guys something that maybe uh, a lot of folks are, are unaware. So if you're not familiar with system D, system D is the, the newer um, and knit process uh, that Linux uses. So init is the first thing that runs on a system and it starts all of the other processes. Um, so traditionally that was um, something called a, a system five or system V init service. Um, this was the, the way that things in the, the Linux world did, did this for, for a really long time. Um, if you're looking at like a BSD system, for example, um, generally they would use something called the, the RC or the run level control. <clears throat> But the idea is, is effectively what it does is it starts the services that are running on your, your system. And system D is relatively recent uh, addition to, to Linux. And a lot of people have very strong opinions about uh, whether it's a good thing or a bad thing because system D is a, does a lot of things in addition to just starting services. And there's an idea in Unix, um, it's been around for, for ages, in terms of the philosophy of how programs should be written uh, specifically, they should do one thing, uh, and they should do it very well. Uh, they should also be able to go take standard in, standard out. But, but the idea is they should do one thing, they should do it well, and, and basically that's it. And the argument from uh, a lot of folks is that System D does uh, a whole bunch of other stuff. Um, it manages C groups uh, or CPU sets. Um, it has watchdog capabilities. It can go do scheduling. It, it's got a bunch of different stuff into it. And I'm kind of mixed on it, uh, but it kind of is what it is at this point. We 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 have system D, uh, it's there, and um, it's got all these sort of additional functionalities that that I think sometimes people are not familiar with. So uh, one of them, uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys really quickly. And basically, what that is is the ability to go ahead and have services uh, restarted automatically. So I'm going to go jump over here to my main display. And let me go move the, the microphone over a little bit. And I'll go maximize this. So hopefully you guys can go see this. Um, this is basically showing that the spam assassin service uh, has, uh, has stopped, right? So this is not running. Um, so uh, it's inactive, it's, it's dead. Um, it should not be, you know, it's not running, right? So one of the things that you can go ahead and do is you can uh, use system D uh, to go ahead and restart processes automatically. So um, in this case, I haven't really looked into why um, Spam Assassin has crashed. It might have been a, a package update. Um, it could have been, you know, um, um, just spammers trying to, to crash services. And, you know, it may be that there's a, a, a bug <clears throat> or an issue that they can get Spam Assassin to, uh, to crash. I'm going to go look into that later. But for right now, what I want to do is really quickly have this be something that is going to get started automatically uh, if it crashes. So if you can see here, uh, we've got the, uh, basically the, the equivalent to your init script, right? So traditionally these would be uh, etc um, rc.d uh, or it would be an etc uh, init.d uh, on a uh, you know BSD or system five system, depending on, on which one you're looking at. Here we have these in the, the lib system D system and then the, whatever the name of the, the, the service unit file is, um, dot .service. Right? So in this case, it's spam assassin, so spam assassin dot .service. Now, one of the things that you want to go do is if you're going to go change this, you don't want to go ahead and modify the, um, the original one. right? So the idea is that being that this is uh, in the lib directory, um, it's a, considered a system library. So when you have something updated, right? if you get a new version of this package installed, it might make changes to that. Um, and that package could overwrite any changes that you make. So what you want to go do is uh, copy this uh, to, and if you can see here, I've, I've already SU'd to, to root, so I'm, I'm the root user here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this file. Right? Uh, I'm going to go copy it to the etc systemd D directory. Uh, and if I tab there, you can see that there's a system uh, directory. And I'm just gonna go copy it in there. And I'm gonna go ahead and CD, ETC, systemd, 
system. I can do an LS and you can see that there's a bunch of things here <clears throat> that, you know, maybe modified or, or whatever it is. So I'm going to go look at the, um, the spam assassin one, right? So I'm going to go ahead and do a vim spam assassin dot service. And you can see here, it's pretty straightforward. It's got a, a unit where it's got description. It's got the type. Um, it's got the, the PID that's going to be created for it. Let's get some other information about the environment and the command that we use to go run this, right? So what I'm going to go ahead and do here is I'm going to go add two lines. They're going to be really, really simple. So this is a very straightforward thing. And this is something that you uh, very well may want to go do on any systems that are uh, running in like a production environment where you'd want that to be restarted. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do a restart equals always. And what you might want to go do, right? I'm just going to do this as always because I, I don't see myself turning this off. Uh, but you might want to do this as like on failed as opposed to always. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm coming down with a little bit of a cold. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do restart always. And then we want to go ahead and tell it how long it's going to, you know, take to, to go restart. So we're going to say restart uh, sec equals, let's say 10. All right. So we're going to basically have this thing restart, you know, in 10 seconds uh, if it's if it's crashed. So there's there's two different things that we need to go ahead and do in order to go make this take effect. So the first thing is is there is a uh, there's a daemon uh, kind of thing that we're that is sort of running in the background that that is system D. So we need to go ahead and, and reload it so it goes and looks at these these unit files and it says okay I'm going to restart restarting things. Um, so I'm going to go do system control CTL uh, daemon uh, and you can see there's reload or re you know so I'm going to go reload here. And, you know, good to go, right? You can see that in fact, that did run successfully, even though it was super, super quick. Uh, and then what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna restart the spam assassin service. Spam assassin. And now this is gonna go ahead and restart. And I can go up arrow to spam assassin status. And you can see that this is now back running again, which is a good thing because I don't like spam. Um, and I run my own mail servers because I don't know, I'm crazy and, and I, <laughs> something that I've done for, that I've always done. Uh, and I like, I like spam assassin. But the idea here is, is we could go ahead and kill spam D. Right. Pop that in there. Not part of that. Let's go kill it by the, the process ID. And we'll we'll give it a dash nine to make it real authoritative. So that's weird. Uh, it's because it's running under Perl. So let's go ahead and do kill dash nine. All right. So now if we do a sleep, let's say 10 seconds, we're just going to let this, you know, wait a few seconds and then we'll go ahead and up arrow. Uh, and basically at this point we should see it running again. All right. So even though we killed this, uh, it should go ahead and restart it. Um, and then we can go back up and do a, Spam assassin status, and you can see that in fact it's running again. Yay! It's got different PIDs and all that kind of stuff. So um, that's the one I should have killed originally. But you can see now this is is 15188, whereas before it was 15151, right? So uh, that did in fact restart the process. Uh, and now Spam Assassin is back up and running again, and we can all be happy and all is right with the world. So um, <clears throat> that's a really quick example. Um, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I'll probably talk more about system D, uh, in the future, because it's, it's a controversial topic and it's, uh, you know, a big change to the, the Linux world. Um, you know, over the last, it's one of the biggest changes that we've had in the, in the Linux world over the last decade. Um, and it's got some, some serious upsides, um, and it's got some downsides and, uh, it's worth talking about. So we'll probably get more into it a, a little bit down the road. Uh, but that's a, that's a cool thing. So if you guys enjoyed this video, uh, do me a favor and go click the, uh, subscribe button. If you enjoyed this particular video, click the, the like button, which is over there a little bit. 
And um, yeah, hopefully we'll see you guys in a, another video in the, the not too distant future. Uh, and I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch it. So have a great rest of your day and I will see you next time.